Welcome to the first of a five-part CE-certified TikToktivity on anemia in myelodysplastic syndrome from MLI, and I'm Dr. Jennifer Caudill. We'll only cover peer-reviewed, evidence-based educational material that will help guide patient treatment decision-making. Now, we all see patients with anemia, but when you can't figure out the cause, do you ever suspect MDS? Now, while MDS is a rare disease, I encounter patients with it routinely in my practice. I'm sure you do too. You know, the earlier we refer our patients to a hematologist, the better their outcomes. So let's talk more about this. First, let's quickly review. The term MDS or myelodysplastic syndromes refers to a group of disorders caused by blood cells that are poorly formed or do not work properly. Low-risk myelodysplastic syndromes, also referred to as LRMDS, encompass a diverse set of clonal disorders originating in hematopoietic stem cells. Management of MDS is most often directed at slowing the disease, easing symptoms, and preventing complications. Common treatment measures include blood transfusions for anemia and medications to boost blood cell production. PCPs play an important role in the early detection of MDS. We're often the first ones to encounter cytopenias during routine blood count evaluations or while working up symptoms such as fatigue, weakness, increased susceptibility to infections or bleeding. You know, we really need to be concerned about our older patients with anemia too, as they are at greater risk for potentially having MDS. Many patients with LRMDS are asymptomatic at diagnosis. However, maintaining a high level of suspicion for MDS will lead to earlier diagnosis, rapid referral to a hematologist, and more aggressive treatment. And these interventions can prevent long-term complications. The diagnosis of MDS requires a multifaceted evaluation and specialized testing conducted by a hematologist, including peripheral blood smear analysis, bone marrow examination, cytogenetic and mutational profiling, and immunophenotyping by flow cytometry. The treatment goal of LRMDS is to decrease the need for transfusions, as well as prevent the transformation to higher risk disease or even AML. We should always be thinking about how disease burden impacts patient quality of life. As the PCP with the established relationship with our patients, we're familiar with the needs and preferences of our patients. PCPs should remain vigilant when monitoring patients with LRMDS for signs of disease progression to high risk, particularly the requirement for more frequent blood transfusions or complications. These signs of progression may be recognized through regular evaluations by a PCP in collaboration with a hematologist. Recognition of these features may warrant closer follow-up or early consideration of disease-modifying therapies, such as lenalidomide, lespatercept, or other options in trials, which we will discuss in a later video. We'll also talk about why a patient's mutational status or presence of ring cytoroblasts is important to making treatment decisions. But the take-home message for this video is, Suspect LRMDS in elderly patients presenting with unexplained cytopenias, especially anemia, since timely referral to a hematologist is important for diagnosis and management. Also, monitor transfusion frequency in your patients with MDS, since frequent transfusions could indicate disease progression and the need for additional therapies, as well as impact patient quality of life. To get credit for this activity, don't forget to answer the questions on the link below. If you're ready to check out the other videos in the series now, you can click on that link now.